So it's no secret that obviously Xbox has been kind of suffering on the exclusive side of things for a very long time now. It's probably been around a decade since they've been even competing when it comes to exclusives, but it does look like Starfield is finally a huge win for the console. And today we're going to be going over why I think it has finally got a win when it comes to the exclusives. Now, Starfield has obviously been one of the most hyped launches of a game in a very long time. The game has been pretty much in development for about 10 years. It's been talked about by Bethesda for a very long time. And then obviously once it became an Xbox exclusive, it became even more hyped because there was obviously a lot of pressure riding on this game. When it comes to Sony, it does feel to me like there isn't that much pressure when it comes to their exclusives because pretty much every single one that comes out is consistently good. And so even if one of them is a bit of a bust, it doesn't really matter that much to Sony. They're probably going to be operating at like a 90% hit rate where nine of them are going to be really, really good. And then yeah, one might come out that isn't that good and it doesn't really matter all that much. On the flip side though, when it comes to the Xbox exclusives, it does feel as though the Sony fanboys tend to come out in droves and when they do fail, it is pretty much magnified due to how poor they have been over the last decade or so. And while I do think the whole console war thing is pretty cringe, to be honest, I can see why they get flamed because to be honest, they've all been pretty terrible for a very long time now. Now, when it comes to Starfield, it had that same thing where there was a lot of pressure on it from not only Xbox players, but Sony players, probably even more so, except it had that on steroids because obviously this game is such a massive game compared to any of the other exclusives that Xbox has launched in the last probably decade or so. And I do think that if this game was a bust, I genuinely think Xbox would take a pretty large hit to their confidence. A lot of Xbox players would be very, very frustrated and the gaming community as a whole would probably never give up on the banter. This is the one that the Sony players and the, the Sony fanboys, at least the ones who buy into the whole console war thing, are probably hoping was the biggest bust. Now, I shouldn't throw all PlayStation players in there. I know a lot of PlayStation players myself who want nothing but success for Starfield because it's only a good thing for gaming at the end of the day, but I think people would be blind if they don't agree that a lot of PlayStation players out there wanted this game to be a bust and unfortunately for them that has not been the case. So far, Starfield seems to be doing amazingly well. It is sitting at an 88 on Metacritic, which to be fair, isn't anything mind blowing, but that is still a very, very good score, especially when it comes to a game like Starfield, where it is kind of hard to tell how good the game is this early on. It is the type of game where you're probably gonna need to spend 100, 200, even more hours to actually realize how good the game is. And so if people are already giving it a, you know, an average score of 88 on Metacritic, that is pretty damn good considering the game has only been out for a little while and most of that has also been early access as well. For a bit of context, Skyrim, which is one of the most loved games of all time, and it has one of the highest Metacritic scores of all time, that had a Metacritic score of about 90, I think maybe 91 in 2011 when it came out. However, it now sits at 96. So it's improved over time after a lot of patches and you know new releases on the new consoles and stuff like that. And so Skyrim went from essentially 90 to 96. Now at that same rate, granted that isn't how it works obviously, but that could leave Starfield at say a 94 for Metacritic score in a few years once there's been more work done to the game and people have had more time to actually get their hands on it. It's also the type of game that once mods come into play as well, granted they aren't from the actual development company themselves, but they do affect the quality of a game even though they are made by players. And once mods start coming in for this game, which the mods are going to get absolutely ridiculous, that is only going to help the game even more as well. Now, even at just 88 right now, that is still a very solid score, even if it never goes up. No, it's probably not going to be game of the year. No, it's maybe not as good as a lot of PlayStation exclusives like God of War Ragnarok and many of the other exclusives, but it is still a huge win for Xbox that they so desperately needed. As far as I'm concerned, this game was never going to be like the best game of all time. It was never going to be more polished than a game like God of War Ragnarok or The Last of Us, for example. And so I know that still a lot of people out there are going to be comparing the PlayStation exclusives to this game and saying, oh, they're still better and all that kind of thing. And that is obviously up to everyone's own opinion. For context for me, God of War Ragnarok is in my top five of all time. So I would probably agree that I don't know if this game is better than that. Granted, it is a very different type of game. And for me, this is more the type of game that I do prefer where I can just sink hours into it for pretty much as long as I want to. For a bit of context, Skyrim is my favorite game of all time. So I'm obviously a big fan of the Bethesda model. And then games like Elden Ring and Red Dead Redemption 2, they are the next on my list and they are the type of games that are 100 plus hours to finish. So as much as I would say some of the PlayStation exclusives are still sort of higher in my list as of right now, Starfield is definitely the type of game that I can see actually moving up my list quite a bit. Now, I also want to say 
keep this in mind too, this is all coming from someone with probably a lot less bias than the average gamer. That doesn't mean I have no bias whatsoever, but the majority of gamers do just stick to one console. Most people just have a PlayStation or an Xbox or a Switch. A lot of people obviously do have both, but the very large majority of people who own a console probably just own one. Most people are generally a little bit more tied to one platform. Now this can come across as a flex. It isn't meant to be. This is just me providing context, but I do have every single platform. I've got a Series X, I've got a PS5, I've got a Switch, and I have a gaming PC, how I even play Pokemon Go on my mobile. So for me, there isn't really any bias when it comes to which one I prefer. I will say I've kind of always been an Xbox guy purely for the fact that the controller fits in my hand better. That is pretty much the extent of why I prefer Xbox over PlayStation. And it is literally by like 1% purely because of the controller. If you gave both consoles the exact same controller, I would have absolutely no bias towards one or the other. I just always had Xbox in the past when I only had one console and that was just purely for the controller. With that being said, I know there's still going to be console war comments in the comment section. And if you want to do that, go ahead. It's only going to help me in the algorithm. But for me personally, I am just happy that Xbox has had a win. Not because I'm an Xbox fanboy or anything like that. It's just a good thing for gaming. If this game was a PlayStation exclusive, I would be thinking the exact same thing. Games of this scale that have success, it is only a positive thing for the gaming industry. With that being said, though, I am very keen to hear your thoughts, whether you guys have played Starfield and whether you enjoy it, whether you think the game sucks. I'm keen to hear all of your thoughts, so be sure to let me know down in the comment section. We are also on the road to 1k subscribers and I'm going to be doing a setup tour once we do hit 1k subscribers. So if you aren't subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on the setup tour. But with that being said, thank you all very much for watching. You guys have a great day and I'll see you all in the next one.